cool, when are we shooting this? And they were like, tomorrow. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm good. Um, hey, so you sword fight, right? She was like, no. I was like, oh, this is gonna be. I was like, you, you ever done a fight sequence or anything? She was like, eh, not really, but. <laughs> and I was like, cool. Um, <laughs> but, but sure enough, uh, she, she really just stepped up and it was, it was awesome. And you know, a lot of it was choreographed. Sometimes it, it, we kind of went out of the choreography and just, you know, broke a couple swords over my neck. Stuff like that. <laughs> I think that that is an iconic episode and, and fight scene, one of the best on the 100. I think you guys would agree on that. And did you have a funny behind the scenes story? You were telling me about what you were punking Alicia during that fight scene that you were pulling on her. Oh, yeah. Um, she, you know, she had that, uh, that like, cape with uh, the shoulder. The pauldron. That, yeah. And, uh, you know, we, um, for most of the day, we were essentially just standing there while, you know, all the kind of ceremony was going on. Um, and uh, you know the, the the cape is like made of velvet, so I'd be like, "What is that velvet?" <laughs> she, it was just like the funniest joke. So like kind of every time I see her anywhere, I'm like, "What is that velvet?" You become an old Jewish man. Yeah, That's basically, what I'm an old Jewish guy. Nice. <laughs> um, at uh, I apologize if I say your name wrong, Internet. At Valenes, B A L L E N N E S. Would like to know what do you think with the last thoughts running through Rowan's head? as he was killed, and do you think Rowan has regrets? I mean, probably quite a few. Um, I, I think what he was thinking was, damn, another night blood, Jesus. <laughs> you know, um, probably something like that. Um, or uh, maybe like, this water's cold, because that was what was going through my head. <laughs> Tons of fans actually had a theory that they didn't actually see you die, die, that you, you were alive. Well, you know what's funny is we did a, we did a take um, where uh, Keen wanted me to just like, you know, hold my breath as long as I could. Um, but I like, I'm a spear fisherman, so I can hold my breath for like three minutes, you know, um, maybe four, if I kind of push it. And uh, so like, I mean, they like literally marshaled the, the, the stunt coordinator like in the middle of like, I'm like, all right, cool, so I'll just go in there and do this. And, Marshall comes running out um, and like pulls me out. I thought like I like died in there. Like, no, fine. Let's do this. It's only been like forty-five seconds. Like, you scared the crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, yeah. So I mean, actually, what was funny about it? That whole theory I think came from you know when you when you meet Rowan. I think it's like the second episode. He pre he does the exact same thing and pretends to drown and then you know that's true. Gets the gets the edge on uh, on on Clark that way. So. You know, I always, my joke with it was always like, if you got acid in your eyes, wouldn't you want someone to put you in the water and wash it out? <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's true. Logistics. Um, at, I know you know this name, at Johnson Judy, one of your teeth, one of your beeps, uh, right there. She gave me this belt buckle. She gave you that belt buckle, yeah. nice. Yeah. Last year, come again. Um, Zach McGowan has an amazing fan club and following. <laughs> yes. Hopefully. Shout out to them. The we best. Hey, we love you. I love you. I love you. Um, so, so Judy submitted this question, which is, okay, so Rowan was the grandson of Theo, eldest son of Nia. Naya. What, thank you, it's been a while. Um, what do you think happened to your father and other siblings? Well, you know, it's funny. I, um, I spent a lot of time talking with, like, you know, Jason. I thought I was like, hey, so you know, we're, we're mentoring some, some people here. Um, do, we, do we know? much about them or any of that. And uh, I always thought, you know, early on, like when I got the facial scarification, I, I asked Ellen, when in their life does this happen? Like, is this like a rite of passage when you like, you know, when you get your bar mitzvah, like, you know, you know, or is this like something that happens when you're a child? Um, you know, and he was like, why? I was like, well, you know, if it were a rite of passage, then maybe he would like, like it, but if it was like something that happened to him, maybe when he was like a child, maybe it was like traumatic, and you know, his dad like seared his face with a poker or something. Um, and I was like, I think they would, it would be different if they were like, you know, either one of those. So then, so I kind of, you know, we talked about it, and I was like, so, you know, he's, and he's like, you think this is a warrior group? I was like, so is this like something where like they put us all in a pit? I was the one who survived, kind of thing, and like I killed my brother and ate him or something. Like, 
you know, was it that or um, we're not talking? I, you know, we never had like definitive answers, but I kind of, you know, assumed it was that. Like, you know, he was like had a lot of early childhood trauma from from those elements of uh, you know of his childhood, and you know, perhaps some of them, uh, you know, were fell victim to that, you know, to that culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Echo, Echo is like a, almost like a little sister figure, sort of. Yeah, and, and we talked about that. I was like, you know, did we grow up together? Like, and why doesn't she have the scars on her face? Like, was she didn't have the rite of passage, or did, or so it's I was like, so, so then it, I was like, then it, does it not happen at childhood? Or is it like, you know, she was chosen not to have those done because of the spy elements? Um, but yeah, we, we kind of said that, uh, that we had a long history and, and you know, that, that basically we were like brother and sister. You know, it, uh, for whatever the equivalent of that is in, in Ice Nation, which I don't think there was a lot of like hugging and right. loving and stuff. Right. <laughs> no. Um, we're gonna, before, uh, if you guys want to start lining up, there's a microphone back there and we'll get to the questions. We're here for you, ask Zach whatever. I think you know anything goes with Zach and Gowan. Yeah, I don't um, really get offended no, by anything. No. Um, <laughs> I wanted to talk about some of your upcoming work, uh, FBI and LA's Finest. Can you tell us about those shows? Um, well, LA's Finest, I think, starts airing in like May, May. Or, and it may or may not be in certain markets because now things are like, it's like a private channel. It's like a whole thing that's all above yeah. my pay grade. Um, and uh, I think that one's really cool. That's, uh, you know, that's Jessica Alba. And, how many episodes do you do? Um, you can tell. I, I'm not sure I'm allowed okay. to talk about but that. But more than one. So before, yeah, but, so before I say anything I'm not supposed to say. But okay. um, mostly about that, I'm, I'm actually, you know, in, in case anyone says I'm just sending a lot of love to Brandon who lost his leg uh, the other day in a terrible uh, accident on set, um, was the showrunner. Uh, so it was, yeah, that was it was really, really, really uh, tragic. Uh, FBI was just, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I just knew the director from like around LA, and he just called me. He was like, "Hey, you want to play a nightclub owner in New York and come like you know be the biggest cocaine dealer in New York City?" <laughs> Why not? I was like, I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> I, I don't suppose you can tell us we're going to be back on Agents of Shield ever because no one's ever really. Well, yeah, I mean that 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 whole. Um, I mean, in that world, like you know, I mean, yeah, exactly. no one really is dead. And I was like, I also died like 800 times. You right? did, yeah. yeah. So, um, so you never know is what your answer is. Yeah, I mean, and who doesn't like, to, you know, these days, everyone likes to kill Russians over and over again. <laughs> that's you know, true. So that's the, you know, that's the thing, you know. Um, I think maybe, you know, maybe he'll come back, like, you know, with Facebook ads or something. <laughs> okay. And then one last thing before you answer my questions. Oh, can you tell us about the movie Robert the Bruce? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. That movie was, that movie was really cool. Um, it actually came out really great. I, I, I checked it out uh, very recently and it's it's just been like sold and it's, it's getting into film festivals and, and all that. I'm, I, I'm like not supposed to really say things because I think like they haven't actually announced but like I know, I, I think I said something in the last one, I got a little trouble. Um, but yeah, that movie's great and uh, I do a Scottish accent in it. So if you ever wondered what my Scottish accent is. Give us a little sample, please. No, no, you have to watch the movie. Okay. There's loads of it in the movie. You gotta tell me how uh, how either terrible or awesome it is. But I I think I pull it off. And when do you know if that's coming out, you know? Um, it'll come out, but it's going into uh, you know, a film festival okay. in the summer and then once that ends is when they like announce the thing. Okay. Even though it's all been done already, right. it's all like they announce it. It's you know, it's so messed up how like they there's like information available that people like get told and then they're like, and you can't tell anyone that. And you're like, I, why did you tell me that then? <laughs> <laughs> Keep it to myself. Yeah. Um but it's really cool. Um I like to say that about that. It's almost like um, it's almost like a western. In some ways, uh, and it's uh, I mean Angus McFadden who played Robert the Bruce in Braveheart plays you know reprises the role which is really cool. Um, that's my favorite movie of all time, Braveheart. So well, it's like that and the Never Ending Story kind of. Which is part. a very different movie. I know. In Braveheart. <laughs> those are the kind of different parts of Zach in right. a weird way. Um, but yeah, it's a really great movie, and I, I think I think everyone will love it. And uh, I ride a lot of horses, and uh, you know I got some a big old broadsword. 
you know, kind of Scottish, Scottish style. Nice. Okay, we'll open for fan questions. What's up? Hi. Hi. So, despite the show never con telling us, um, Roman's banishment seemed to be an important part of his character. I was wondering if they ever told you or if you had any, any theories as to why he was banished? Yeah, I, uh, I, I talked a lot uh, early on because literally when when I started on the show, that was kind of already part of it, and uh, I talked to Jason about it a lot. And you know, a lot of that stuff is like kind of vaguely explained, and not you know definitively explained. Um, what I chose to make it because it wasn't it was that he had a moral dilemma that is uh, you know that that he didn't do what was like you know asked of him, like he didn't follow orders that he thought were like incorrect, and that you know. Like, I have, like, whenever I think of that, so, like, I, I have Jewish family, so I always think about, like, the people who followed what the Nazis told them, and then the people who didn't, and I was, like, I think he, like, didn't do it, because I was trying to make him as, like, redeemable as possible, since I was dra dragging Clark around with a dog chain, basically, so, I was, like, these people are gonna hate me, God, um, so I was, like, you know, in my mind, I was, like, you know, he got screwed over by a bunch of bad leaders, and, and he was banished, and, uh, he's trying to, find his way back into into society some way uh, so that they can run back in. Question, please. Thank you so much for coming to the party last night. Oh, thank you. Did everyone have a good time? Is, is there anyone who did get a selfie? Uh, wow, this is amazing. The con is young. All right, all right. Before I ask my question, I just have to say, I put a green flower crown on your head and then it fell off. I haven't been able to find it. If anyone has it, <laughs> I kind of want it back. A green flower crown. It's like clovers. Okay. I remember. I remember it going on my head, but I don't remember it going off. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. No, it's okay. And I love. I love a flower crown. <laughs> Maybe more than the bone crown you had to wear. Yeah, I, you know, I was. By the way, like I was like, I was like, I'm not wearing this crown. <laughs> I was like, no. And then, like, I tried to, like, put that in the scene when she gave it to me. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, it actually is funny that a, a crown uh, requires, like, more fittings, I think, than any other element I've ever put on. Like, a crown has to fit you exactly. And you know what we found out is that it fits both me and Jason perfectly. We must have, like, the exact same, like, don't No comment. <laughs> Okay, so my question is, would you like to come up with an improvised like movie trailer voiceover on the spot? I'll give you the prompt for it. Okay. Uh, yeah, what, what do you got? Okay, you've just received a text message. It's from your friends Bob Morley and Eliza Taylor. They're telling you that they are doing an action movie together. They want you to do the trailer. So. One man, one woman, <laughs> one world. <laughs> In that world, there's no man. All there is, is me. <laughs> I don't know what you want that Thank you. Okay, so in your fight scene with Lexa, if it went a different way, do you think Rowan would ever be the one to kill his mother? Ooh. You know, he definitely did not have a very good relationship with his mother. Um, I mean, as you saw in the scene that you saw with them, yeah, they're not getting along that well, and she's just like dictating stuff to him, and he's like, I hate you, and I'm like, chains, basically. Um, so I, I thought about that, actually. I was like, you know, how does he feel about, like, mom dying? And I, what I kind of, what I kind of chose in that moment was like, he didn't really want his mom to die that day, uh, but he also didn't want to die that day. I don't think he would have killed his own mother, um, especially, you know, if if he was kind of forced to kill family maybe early on, then I, I feel like, you know, that wasn't, it. like, I don't think he liked being told to do things that were wrong, you know, um, but he got told them a lot, so I don't think he would have killed his mom. By the way, Brenda, who played that part, my mother's name is Brenda, and her son is Zach, Wow. Play it up. That's awesome. Yeah. Weird, you. you know, confluence. 
Hi. Hey. So my question is, well, first of all, I'm a huge Seamus fan, especially oh, Elon Seamus. So, so, so my question is, what is your favorite part of playing like the funnier character of Jody versus playing like the rough, badass one? You know, it, it's actually not that different for me, because uh, either way, like, they're both not me, so I'm just, like, playing a character. Um, I think the best thing about Shameless for me was just how, how easy it was and, and simple, and it's a studio show, so mostly you're just kind of going into Warner Brothers, and it's John Wells' production, and John has been around for so long that, like, you know, they don't do overtime on shows like that. Like, it's like a nine-hour day. It's, like, really easy. Whereas, you know, shows like The 100 or Black Sales or anything, pretty much anything else, just, you know, you shoot for, like, 16 hours in a day out in the middle of, like, a very cold environment or something. So, as far as just, like, the, you know, the ease of it, uh, Shane was, was a very easy job. I actually had no, I was, like, my first really big job, so I had no idea how easy it was. I was like, oh, man, geez. All you gotta do is just walk out there and hit you, and it's fine. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I really enjoyed that. I, I love acting, so like, you know, it, it doesn't really, to me, it doesn't really matter what I'm playing, uh, as long as I'm playing. <laughs> Good question, thank you. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I know you're Zach, but um, <clears throat> I've been going around doing this thing, I'm gonna drive every crazy with the names, and so your name is Rowan, which means tree, right? And that would be Tree of Knowledge. Tree of Knowledge, the only person that sat there and hung themselves on Tree of Knowledge was Odin. And so like, my question to you is that epic scene between you and Luna when we lost you. Um, and she had gone from the peacekeeper to the absolute hell demon who wanted to wipe out everyone. Did you notice that it was very similar to Ragnarok? Um, well, Ragnarok hadn't come out yet, uh, so... Not that same. Yeah, I, uh, I, I definitely, you know, I was like, you know, I was acutely aware of the, you know, the, the connection to, like, folklore and whatnot, and, uh, I, um, I mean, quite a few times I was like, so are we, like, Thoring this a little bit, like oh, yeah. what's the story here with the, you know, uh, with all that? And I, I talked to Jason and some of the directors about it. Um, and what I found with a lot of that stuff is like, you know, reading into the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the lore is very interesting, um, but it actually doesn't help me that much when I'm like there on a day. So it's like it's like the things that will actually, you know, take my mind away from what it is I'm really doing, which is like, all right don't break this sword over Nadia's face. Like, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff, which is, in reality, the tough parts of it. But yeah, I, I was acutely aware of that. Thank you. Nice. Okay, so I know you've been on a lot of shows, in a lot of different roles, done a bunch of conventions, and I want to know, what is the most interesting or unusual thing you've ever had someone autograph for you? <laughs> <laughs> or ask me to autograph? Yeah, the, like, that you have been given and said, please sign your name on this. Are there children? Okay, yeah, there's some children here, I think. Um, I have autographed, I mean, almost anything that you can imagine at this point. Um, <laughs> uh, but there, there's been some, some really interesting ones. Um, I autographed the bottom of this person's foot, which was a really interesting spot. They said they were gonna get a tattoo down the bottom of their foot. And I was like, that was just weird. I was like, can you even tattoo the bottom of your foot? I didn't even know that. Um, and then, I've, I mean, I've, I've auditioned everything from, you know, replica swords that people have brought in and uh, uh, costume pieces from different shows. And um, I think I like, I mean, I even like autographed like the flame ones, which is like so small, I was like trying to get in there. And, <laughs> I, I auditioned. Uh, I auditioned. So I, 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 I autographed someone's forehead once. Well, they wanted the me forehead. The forehead. These are really forehead. interesting answers. Yeah, uh, I mean, and then there was other body work. I won't get into that. Right. <laughs> 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 
definitely been some breasts Guys, around down there. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm not someone to say no to that. I'm not gonna be like, no, you can't have this autograph. Like, you know, who am I to say no? Like, that? <laughs> I mean, you don't know, want something. You're so giving, Zach. I'm a giver. You're a giver, man. Good I'm question. Thank, thank you. Hey. Okay, so when you get a script and you realize your character is gonna die, how does that make you feel? Like, do you ever come across and you're like, oh wow, this is an epic way to go out? Or do you really look at this and go, really? <laughs> what do you feel when you get a script like that? I mean, there's definitely times where I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like that, and then there's times when I'm like, oh, this is awesome, this is. This is great. I mean, I think each case has its own, uh, as its, you know, it's, it's, its own case, like each thing. Um, there have been times when I've been really happy about how it's going down, and there's been times when I wouldn't have written it that way in a million years. Um, but at the same time, uh, that's just part of like, like what I've learned about acting is, uh, and and basically life, uh, that ego is the problem with everything. Like, you know. Your ego is what kind of is, is the limit that you have. Um, and I've been like on like a personal journey to try to be egoless, but I know that's hard, so I know I have ego still, and I like try not to. Um, but I know every time I read them, whatever my reaction is that's negative is based on ego, and so I just try to go, you know, fuck you, ego. Let's go work. Good question, thank you. And you're great, by the way. VIP. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hi. Um, so I was wondering if you that sometime in season six or even further in the show, you think Rowan will be mentioned again, and who do you think will mention him? <clears throat> you know, I think Bellamy misses him the most. <laughs> um, in some ways. You know, um, just because I think Bob misses me the most. Oh, it's so sweet. Um, but I think I think I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. The, you know, the, the show has gone very far since that, and uh, I, I don't. I don't know. Um, but if, if they do, uh, I hope it's. Uh, I hope he's he's remembered well. Thank you. I think Echo definitely thinks about you all the time. I think she must. Yeah. I mean, she must be like. Am I still banished? <laughs> in space. In space, in a place where there's no ice age anymore. Exactly. Oh, but, but because she, she can't be unbanished from it, so it's like, it's kind of like, if like, you know, I don't know, like, if, 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 some, if you have a fight with someone and then they die, like, you never get catharsis. So, you might, you know, there must be, there must be that thought, you know, for sure. Hi. Hi, Zach. Hey. My name is Brenna. Um, Brianna? Brenna. Brenna. Hi, Brenna. Um, so, when Rowan was first introduced in the show, I immediately took to him and was really interested in his dynamic with Clark. So, my question for you is, how would you have felt if Rowan and Clark got together? <laughs> I wouldn't have any problem with that. <laughs> um, you know, I think, I think Rowan, uh, I think the first time he saw her, he was like, oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> I, got a, I got a leash here, I'm gonna drag her out. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, and I think over, I mean, over time, they became very good friends, and they, and they, they, they grew a lot of you know, respect for each other, but I think, I think had they met under like different circumstances, and if life had been a little differently for either of them, uh, that, you know, I think maybe he, he might have taken a shot, I don't know. I mean, he didn't, he didn't have any romantic relationships on the show, uh, which uh, which is, I think, the only show I've ever done where that's the case. Um, I think, yeah. I think I would, because even in Agents of Shield, like me and Mallory, like she like made out with me and then like bashed my head in. So, um, yeah, oh, she ripped my shirt. By the way, there's a really funny picture of that where like they got like my shirt ripped like halfway and. Like, Abs are all out, and like all the like, it's just a weird show. It's a, it's a, I'm like walking around the set like that, so it's a weird one. But yeah, I think he, I think he would have, uh, I think he would have liked. I mean, certainly 
I actually asked, I asked Jason once, I was like, do you think he's asexual? Like, yeah. you know, I was like, does he maybe just not, you know, like, did they like cut his dick off when he was like four or something? And I, I, I was, you know, I mean, sure, like, I was like, trying to like understand it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Zach, I love you so much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I was like, I was like, he's like always hanging out with these beautiful women and like, Nothing. It's like there's no. I was like, so is it, I was like, so is he gay? Like, is he white Bob? Or like, I, I do want to clarify that for asexual, it has nothing to do with, with castration or any kind of removal of genitalia. It does. Asexual is amazing. Asexual, yeah. Like, but, but I mean, I was, I wasn't sure. Like, I was like, you know, I always ask, I'd be like, you know, does he, you know, has he been, you know, is there more, you know, is there been, right. is this the only thing they did? I mean, you know, I don't know. Well, it's interesting because. Um, the ground is you didn't see a lot of relationships, and one of the big uh, questions was they had you know birth control on the ark, but down on earth, what there aren't ground or babies, so what were they doing? Yeah. And, a lot, and then a lot of people they weren't sexualized beings. No, so you're like what? You're, yeah. Where are the babies? Right. <laughs> What's going on? Um, Tazia's answer was that they're um, they were sort of put in a ground or cryo somewhere. They were being saved. Yeah. Yeah, they were responsible. Sure. Um, Great. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. We're going on a tangent now. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's what we do. Hello. Um, thank, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> or maybe, I don't know. Um, I wanted to know, um, one of the things that I loved about Rowan was his relationship, not only to Clark, but to um, Bellamy as well, like that three-part team. Well, it's not a team, it was kind of like antagonistic. And humor, did you, did you feel the humor of their kind of like, in our, it, it was the funniest stuff. Oh, it was Always. Funny, <laughs> Always. I was like, and sometimes I read it, I just be like, oh my god, we're going we're gonna to do that with a straight face. Um, yeah, I, I, I always saw it, I, and uh, I think me and, I mean, both me, Bob, and Eliza, like, had, like, laughing fits in the middle of very serious scenes a lot of times. Um, like, I mean, one, one that sticks out with, like, Eliza was, like, when she, like, holds the gun at me, and I just grab it, I was like, so I'm just going to grab it in her hand, like, <laughs> I was like, wait, she just shoot me. Like, you know, um, you know, like that doesn't work. Like, you can't grab it. Like, if someone holds your gun at you, like that, don't try to grab it out of their hand. Like, you know, um, I uh, yeah. I mean, and then with, and then with Bob, like, I mean, they always, you know, like, we we were always like, you know, like trying to like one up each other in some like strength thing, or like he was hitting me or stabbing me, and I'm stabbing him back, or now we're even kind of stuff, um, uh, and. And I think that that's also just like, like me and Bob like do that with each other, like you know. So it was just it was just kind of natural. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was definitely very funny, and uh, and a lot of times it it, it it didn't escape me or any of us. And uh, I mean, to the point where like, I mean, me and Eliza once did a scene which they hadn't even written yet. Like they they were like so in the scene you're, you're gonna do this and that and this and we were like is there a script and they were like not yet and I was like so you want us to just like do it and uh, and they were like yeah pretty much <laughs> because what happened uh, actually Paige had uh, like she was like a big thing it was actually when we were microwaving the guy well it always comes up I I'm disturbed by the microwaving um, but like during that during that episode, there's that scene where we're up at the top like, looking out the window. Like, that scene wasn't really written, and we were supposed to be shooting the microwave scene, but um, Paige had, like, a, a, just, like, some sort of tooth issue or something. She couldn't shoot uh, because, like, she was in pain. And so, like, the whole day went to, you know, you couldn't shoot, and she had, like, all the stuff that day. So they were like, hey, this is, like, in the next episode, but we haven't written it all yet. And so, like, basically, this is gonna happen. And then, like, me and Eliza are up there, like, we like we were rehearsing a scene that didn't have a script yet. Wow. And it was like, I don't know, it was actually, it was funny. I think that might be the best scene we have together. <laughs> yeah, like, it's a really good scene. Like, because, like, one, one of the things that I have to do is, like, when I'm on shows, is, like, I gotta pick scenes that I want to be, like, representative of the work so that, like, you can't, you can't put everything in the real, like, I mean, my reel's already like nine hours long, so I have to have like three minutes from each different show. And uh, I think I chose that scene with, with her, uh, and we had a lot of fun. Uh, and yeah, so I guess we laughed, we cried. Uh, I died. <laughs> I, 
hate that you died. Aww. I'm still salty about it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Zach. Hey. Um, so, hey, I was just thinking about it. Are, are there more? Because you've got three team roles, right? I mean, it depends on, you know. You've got team roles. Uh, you've got the Scorpion King, and now you've got Robert the Bruce. Who would be the King of Scots? Mm. Any other so, trying to dig a little bit out there. I don't believe in things. <laughs> so that's why I think they always cast me. Yeah. So any thoughts on uh, writing or directing? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I actually, I write a little bit. Um, the last script I wrote, you know, this thing happens in Hollywood. Sometimes you have this, like, confluence of ideas. And a script to really be done well like requires a lot of time. And I ended up writing, uh, I used to be a chef back in the day, um, or a cook, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I was writing a story about, uh, about uh, a chef who you know, decides to leave fine dining and open up a, you know, a food truck and blah, blah, blah. And then you know, John Favreau wrote the same script. And I was like, God. like literally, like I finished that, and like the day I sent it into my reps, like they were like, "Oh, you should see this thing that's just casting right now." And I was like, "Oh my God, we wrote the same script." And I never, you know, it's just, it's just like it. I literally had written Jeff, and and that was the last time I just I couldn't bring myself to write it again because I was like that had taken me like a long time, and I had really like done it outright. Um, as far as directing. Uh, I think I could direct an episode of TV uh, very easily. Uh, I, I know all of the elements. I just haven't been given that opportunity yet. Hey. hey. Uh, also, Shep would have been far more believable with you in the role, with Scarlett Johansson and Sofia Vergara fawning over you than John Favreau just throwing. <laughs> I, I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was one of my main criticisms of the movie. Anyway, um, I always found what Rowan's cadence and speech pattern very interesting, where he spoke more like a, a, a person from this time, um, with his sarcastic comments and kind of the, the rhythms, um, than anyone else on the show. Um, and it, it stood out in that way. Was that part of your performance that you... Is that a subconscious thing? How did that find its way into the role? Or am I just imagining? Um, so, yeah, I mean, what happens with a lot of those kind of character choices you make um, is, you know, especially like with this role, what was, it's actually one of, you know, when, when you, like I got the role of Rowan on offer, so I never actually like had to put him together until I got to set, um, which is like a different than when you audition for because you've already like put the character together and kind of presented it. Um, so early on, you know, obviously there's a lot of back and forth about that, like, oh, how's he going to talk? Did you do this? Oh, he should be doing this. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, he should be doing this or he should be doing that, uh, and so. Kind of early on, uh, I I was just trying like they were pushing me to you know to be to be doing you know to to kind of be like to to go I think what I would call more broad um, and I was kind of pushing it to more grounded um, and uh, broad meaning like you know broad I don't know I don't know what I, I don't know, but so I I was always trying to find little like ways to to ground and make him uh, a little a little less broad. Uh, and I think that's where that came from. That was just, I think, me coming out in him. Um, and I think they wrote towards that once they started realizing that you know we were doing that. I got like all these really great kind of one-liners, in, which is great. And I think that's where it, that's where it kind of comes from. All right, cool. Hi. Yeah. So first off, my nest is high guys the way back. And he said for that late class up fishing trip. And then um, my question is, what do you think happened to Rowan's dad? I mean, so the fishing trip, Lake Winnipesaukee? What? Yeah, my dad said he's waiting for that Lake Placid fishing Lake trip Placid. you guys talked about last year. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm down. Uh, I love fishing. I'll go to Lake Placid and fish any day um, when I'm available. I, I, I really, I love people. I, don't know, I just love eating fish and I love catching fish. Whether it's with a rod or reel, or a spear gun, or 
my bare hands. And, you know, <laughs> uh, I actually done that. I mean, it's, it's really awesome. You can Shocker. actually you can catch fish with your hands. It's, it's totally true. Um, but yes, uh, and then as far as my father, uh, I was actually I, I asked uh, a lot about that. I was like, hey, do you think he ever met his father, or is he is he fatherless? You know. Um, and Jason was like, uh, you know, a lot of those questions like you don't you don't get answers to, right? Because they don't have the actual answer, um, so you gotta kind of make a choice. Uh, so I chose that uh, he, he he never knew his father, uh, and that and that he just like I thought that was a more interesting choice for him uh, that he never had uh, guidance from from a father figure, and that's kind of I think one of the reasons that. Maybe he struggled with leadership and trying to do it. Um, so what happened to him? I mean, in the ice station, I always imagined like people's deaths and stuff were just terrible, um, and that the world was very, very tough there. So like, I, I don't know if you knew this. Like, uh, I remember being a child and, and reading about like certain native cultures where like the people who were like old would just like be, you know, like they couldn't keep up with the group or something and would like walk off and into the cold and die, and I kind of thought of it maybe like it was that kind of situation, like... Your mother probably killed him. Or maybe that, too. I, I thought about that a lot, too. I mean, she was certainly not the nicest of people, um, so it's possible. But I, I kind of thought of it that way. Like, I was, I was kind of pictured him, like, freezing to death out in the cold and, like, you know, ruined having never met him. Thank you, Jimmy. Really quick, I believe we have a Facebook Live question, Tom. We're actually on Periscope, right? Periscope? Oh, what's up? Someone wants to know uh, if there's any of the cast giving you any inside info that you can share about uh, the next season. Has any of the cast given you season six scoop? Be careful, Zach. I know way much. I know all kinds of things I should know. <laughs> and I won't tell you who told me them. <laughs> but I think you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I know all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I like keep up with the show. I love it. It's great. Um, I love watching my friends. And, uh, every once in a while, I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. Um, so yeah, I, I know a bunch of stuff, but uh, I'm not allowed to tell you any of it. Good answer. Because then they'll kill me. Oh, yeah. wait, maybe I should jump. <laughs> You hear that? I'm holding you hostage. <laughs> I will tell all of the spoilers. <laughs> all right, last two questions. All right, um, so you mentioned uh, the only fucking rowing, so I want to talk about the first scene that you three shot together, I believe, which was in the subway station in like episode two. I don't know if your daughters watched Tangled, but that's like, really similar to the scene at the end where Mother Gothel appears out of nowhere to like, stab uh, the guy who's like coming to like you know save the princess. And I was just wondering, it's like you're filming that scene, it's like you've got like him on the ground with like a sword to his throat, and he's screaming, it's like, don't kill him, don't kill him, I'll go with you. Like, what was, what was that like? A lot of tension. Well, whenever you come on a show, uh, either they introduce you immediately like getting your ass kicked or <laughs> kicking one of the lead's asses. Uh, it, it's like, it's just an either or. That, that'll happen in almost every you know, kind of situation you end up in. Um, so mostly that day, I was I was just like trying to deal with like I think Bob was like, "What's going on? I'm topping this show, and he's just coming here and just like knocking me over, and like I would totally beat him." Like you know? and I was like, I was like, man, I was just, you know, I'm just trying not to hurt you with the sword, you know. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so it was, I mean, I, I think it was uh, it was it was like really funny for that reason. Also, I I just like soldered my, you know, stab wound together. And, and it was actually, it was so funny. Uh, I believe, I, don't know, I can't remember who was directing that episode, but I remember being like, I did the first day, and I was like, you know, like showing some pain, and the director was like, no pain at all, like nothing. And I was like, I mean, it's a hot iron poker, like it's gonna hurt, I mean, even if he's tough, like you still feel pain, like, so yeah, but you don't have to react to it. And I was like, so that was actually, <laughs> That's what, like, that, that was actually what was, like, my biggest concern that day was just, like, how, I mean, like, I know some really tough people who, who can, you know, deal with a lot of that, but, like, you can't put 
a hot poker like that up to yourself and not at least do like a little like you know clench in the jaw or something. So I did like three takes. I mean, like walked me back to that point. I was like, all right, so like nothing. All right. <laughs> you know. Like, Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. I hope you're octopus platypus man. <laughs> your expectations. It was so awesome. The octopus platypus man uh, chimera, chimera, is that how I say that? Uh, is is awesome. And I think I think that he that, that I don't know it or whatever that thing is, uh, is is much more terrifying than uh, than, than uh, a hippopotamus with wings. I, you know, to me, I know hippos are very dangerous, but like they're also cute. Yeah. Yeah. They little key, and, and the pink, and the water, and the babies, and you know, all that. Um, so I, you know, I don't. I, I think, and then a plat, you know, it, it, it looked great, and, and I think I, I, what I loved was that you put him in a suit. That's what I said. That's what yeah. I think I was wearing. Yes, he's wearing a suit, and he's got a head of an octopus. He's basically like uh, what was it? like Davy Jones in uh, in, in <laughs> yeah, in Pirates of the Caribbean, um, with with like a a duck bill, platypus duck bill, um, and uh, I I I was like, I knew I was right about this. This, this thing is absolutely terrifying. Thank you. Well, on that note, let's thank Zach McGowan. Thank you so much. You guys have a good day. Yeah. All right. The next panel, I believe, is Bob Morley. So stay tuned.